Hi everyone, good to see you. Welcome to the Choral Alphabet. This is the 13th episode of 26. This is the halfway point of the Choral Alphabet series. So we're at M. What else could it be, given what's going on here? At, at, well, in Choir of the Earth as well. It had to be Monteverdi. One of his very first pieces, an Ave Maria, published when he was just 15 years old. 15! Amazing stuff. I wonder if he was even shaving at that point. Well, we shall enjoy his beautiful piece for three parts. Quite a lot shorter than last week's offering, which was gorgeous. That Lottie is just, just wonderful, but it was quite long to teach anyway. So we will take far less time to teach everything today. And as a result, we'll have time to play through the piece several times with each voice louder for those of you that have been asking for that. So there we are. Uh, I just need to check everything's working sound-wise. I am, of course, several minutes early. There we go. Now, Mike is asking why no bass line. Let's, get, let's put your chat up on screen. I'm pretty sure there is a bass line, Mark. Uh, sorry, Mike, it's uh, alto tenor bass in the score that we've got. Now, I don't want that to put any sopranos. If I just show you, if I just go back to the split screen, you can see on the far side, the score that we're using is alto tenor bass. And uh, as a result, the sops are going to have to sing a little bit on the lower side. The lowest note, though, is a mere A, which is still technically within the soprano range. It just means that it's comfortable for everyone to sing. So I hope that answers your question there, Mike. How is everyone doing? Wonderful to see you all. Let me just double check that uh, everything's working here in the studio. Do we have the choir? There we go. Lovely stuff. That's the one. So that's working. Do we have the cathedral acoustic? We do. Fabulous. There we go. Mike's saying his score is in F major. Let me just see. Did I, is that my mistake? Because if so, I can rectify that pretty quickly. That's a bit odd. IMSLP. Just give me two moments, everyone. Let me just have a look here. Uh, okay. Many apologies. What I'll do is I shall just sort that out right now. I'll change the link live for those watching. So if you're watching this later on, you won't see the score that's caused the worry. Let's just put that where it needs to be. Dum, 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 dum. Okay, so if you're watching live, if you go into the comments, there will now be an updated score, which is uh, alto, tenor and bass, which reflects, I think, far more of our intentions today. So how's everyone doing? Uh, <laughs> very, very well. Lisa says, very handily, thank you, Sops. Altos will handle the notes that you can't reach. There we are. This is the thing. We're always looking out for each other in this community. So don't worry. As I said, Sops, the lowest note is an A, and I know Rutter writes lower than that for Sopranos. So it might be a little bit on the low side for you in a couple of places, but it's not going to be unsingable. And uh, it just means that everyone can sing together. It also means that we aren't going to be spending an hour teaching the piece, as it's really only three parts, five lines, absolutely lovely piece of Renaissance polyphony, which I think is just what we need here on a Wednesday afternoon. So I do hope everyone is having a good day so far. All is well here. We're busying ourselves with everything that's coming up this term. I'll be able to tell you very shortly what's coming up next week on the Choral Alphabet, as well as I've been getting the streams ready for Friday. And then next week, of course, is a four stream week. We've got Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So we'll be preparing for all of that. I'm also getting everything ready for my Monteverdi Around Sound course, which continues on Friday. So busy, 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 but all good. Very Monteverdi themed at the moment, because I'm writing a talk about Monteverdi. I'm teaching you fine folks some Monteverdi. And of course, uh, I'm well and truly into the Vespers uh, out over on Choir of the Earth. And I have to say, I, I made a very foolish statement to Cry of the Earth, something along the lines of, well, there aren't that many earworms in the Monteverdi Vespers. 
Well, you know, three o'clock in the morning last night, I just woke up with just so many of Monteverdi's melodies just competing in my head. Lots and lots of amens for some reason. So it is absolutely fabulous music, whether it's the early stuff, whether it's the mid uh, mid Monteverdi, if you like, the mid Monte, which is all that stuff he produced in that first decade of the 17th century, or even the later stuff, which I'm researching and uh, going through at the moment, stuff like the Coronation of Popea, which is just oh, glorious. But there's a lot and lot of a Monte at the moment, so there we are. Now, look, uh, welcome to everyone who's watching this broadcast later on. Remember, of course, if you're new, you can leapfrog through this bit of preamble and get straight to the start of the broadcast if you wish because it will be time stamped once we've finished streaming and if you are new welcome my name is Ben it is my huge pleasure and privilege to welcome you to a very special YouTube channel Home Choir is free to everyone it's a community of people who love singing and who love music in general so we will be exploring a new piece today it's Ave Maria by Claudio Monteverdi, composed in the late 16th century, sometime in 1580-something, thereabouts, when he was a young lad. Probably 1582, I believe, when he would have been 15 years old. And so I will teach the entire piece from beginning to end, starting with the alto slash soprano part, then the tenor, then the bass, and then we'll sing the whole thing through. And then this will be featured in our Sing Sunday a week on Sunday when we uh, come together and sing a couple of lovely new pieces. Now, if you are uh, here, but you it, perhaps it, you're watching later on, maybe you weren't here live, you're one of the hundreds and hundreds of people who catches up with Home Choir. Particular thanks to all of you. I do hope you enjoy the singing today. Please remember everyone, click the like button, doesn't cost you anything. And if you are one of the dozens of people, hundreds actually, who watches our streams regularly but aren't yet subscribed, well, if you wouldn't mind, make today the day because we're aiming for 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year and doing very very well on that target 3919 as of this broadcast so 81 more people need to click subscribe and we will hit our 4,000 target which is fantastic and someone said to me what happens when we reach 4,000 I say great we set a target for 5,000 but given that the pace of subscriptions is increasing I hope it won't be too long before we hit 5,000 subs and of course we are on our way to that YouTube play button which you get at 100,000 subscribers everyone. They send you a special framed play button and I really really want one. Okay so I mean everyone who subscribes just needs to set up multiple channels and subscribe multiple times and you know we, we get there but I would never ask that. Let's, let's just see if we can get 100,000 people to subscribe. What do you think? Yeah I think it'll work. Now, those who are here live but aren't in the live chat, a very, very good afternoon to all of you. Hello to Helene and Bill and Val in California. Hi, folks. Hello, Sue and Tony and Sally and Annie and Maureen. Hello to Harry and June. A special hello to everyone down under at the moment, to Jeffrey and to Jane. I do hope you're all keeping very well. Hello to Anne and Linda and Charlotte and Nikki and Val and Huyen and Katie as well. And then hello, everyone over here. I do hope everyone is very well. Carolyn was looking forward to more baby pics. Yeah, I learnt my lesson, Carolyn. <laughs> That's not happening. A very good afternoon, Addy. Hello, Alison. Hello, Angela. Hello, Carolyn. Hello, Dave. Hello, Jill. Hello, Emma. Hello, Frida. Hello, Gainer. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Janet. Hello, Jill. Jill, lots of love to you, and I hope you feel much, much better soon. Um, and welcome home. Just get better. Hello Kitty, hello Lisa, hello Lisa, hello Mike, hello Ruth, hello Sean, hello Soraya, hello Susanna, hello Suzanne, hello Terry, hello Wendy, hello to Nikki, catching up later on, and to Nicola and Michael and everyone else. I also had a message from Carol who wishes us all the best and we'll be catching up later on so thank you for that Carol as well. Uh, fabulous. Lisa says you don't have to specify whose baby pics. I'm going to draw a veil over this conversation pretty swiftly, everyone, and start our broadcast. Thank you for being here today. This is the halfway point of the choral alphabet, and so I'm very excited to teach you this gorgeous piece of Monteverdi. So let's sing in the nice key of B flat. Let's have home choir, and we'll start our broadcast. Are you ready? Nice deep breath, and... Yeah, there's a B-flat in there somewhere. I, I, I am on the mend, but the presence of a B-flat 
tells me there's still a couple of days to go before the cold has cleared. Welcome all of you to the midpoint of the Coral Alphabet project. We started this back in January and this is the 13th episode and it is M for Monteverdi. We're going to be learning a three-part Ave Maria uh, which is very very sweet and very much in the old style that what Monteverdi himself would have called the Prima Pratica in the style that Palestrina and Gabrielli would have written in. It's very very lovely it's very simple and we'll learn it in about half an hour coming next week n is for neumark uh, and we are going to be learning one of his hymn tunes which was harmonized by bach and some of you might say well surely this is just an excuse to have another bach chorale as part of the choral alphabet and to those of you i would say no comment. But it's a really gorgeous piece of uh, of writing called Fair Nur der Lieben Gott lässt walten. And uh, yes, Bach may have harmonised it in particular style, but it was all Neumark's work originally. So that is next week's Choral Alphabet. And don't forget, we've got much more coming up on the channel. We've got a fun Friday designed from the ground up to put a great big sunny smile on your face. We're going to sing When You're Smiling, along with lots of other cheery tunes. We've had a few sad songs on Home Choir recently. Time to bring the sunshine. And then we're not around at the weekend. We're back then on Monday with a song. Songs of the Sea, and we're going to be learning a new song called Lowlands Away, which is a great, great sea shanty. Now, of course, all of that and more besides, you can find out all about it by signing up for our Home Choir newsletter, which is completely free. All of Home Choir is completely free. We just ask you to go to the website, fill in the form, click submit when you're done, and that's it. That's all you need to do. And we will send you a wonderful email every week, which will contain, contain all the links. It'll contain scores and any other news that you find interesting as a home chorister. And we promise to never spam you. And if you tell us when your birthday is, just the day in the month, we'd never ask the year, we will sing you happy birthday when your special day comes round. And tomorrow, while we're off the air, we're going to be celebrating Ray and Karen's birthdays. So to both of you, a very, very happy birthday. Let's warm up and then we'll sing happy birthday for Ray and Karen. So everyone, if I could ask you, please, to stand up, thank you very much. Quick sip of drink. Stay hydrated, ladies and gentlemen. It's very, very important as singers. And we'll just start by taking some deep breaths in and out. <sighs> Lovely, and rolling your head around. People are commenting that, you know, for M, there could have been so many other composers and of course they could we could have had Mozart you're quite right we could have had Mendelssohn we have had though to be fair quite a lot from those composers we could have had Mahler though he didn't write a huge amount of choral music I think the second symphony take us more than half an hour to learn the choral parts of Mahler too but I thought it's quite a timely thing given what's going on in Choir of the Earth at the moment to have some Monteverdi bring your shoulders up and as you breathe out relax your shoulders here we go Great. Just stretch those muscles out. Just be kind to yourselves, everyone. Thank you very much. Okay. We're going to hum that little pattern up a fourth and down again. Here we go. Up a semitone and the same thing. And... Let's have some arpeggio shapes now. To ya and ya. Indeed. Let's bring those birthdays back on screen. So it is Ray and Karen, both of whom are 
long-standing subscribers to the newsletter. So a very happy birthday to both of you for, I believe it is tomorrow, for each of you. So let's sing, everyone. After two, ready, a one, two. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Many happy return, uh, returns of the day to both of you. Happy of the returns. Yeah, yeah, that, that's slick, Ben. Okay, so <laughs> let's bring our score up on screen. And with a magical wave of the hand, this is now the teaching zone for the Ave Maria by Monteverdi. As I say, this piece was written in the first part of his life. The main bulk of the really influential stuff came in the first decade of the 17th century, the start of the Baroque era. But at this point... He was still a teenager, still learning his craft when he wrote this piece. And it's very, very sweet. It's very short. What we're going to do is we're going to enjoy just listening through. Then we will learn the alto slash soprano part, because it is both parts together on that line. Uh, then the tenor and the bass. And just to say, those of you singing uh, alto might want to have a go at the tenor part. I know it looks high, but of course it all sounds down uh, an octave as written and uh, is a very nice part for ten altos as well. Okay, so here we go. Starts on that note there, and this is what it sounds like. Enjoy. As I say, short and sweet, lovely, lovely music. Nothing, you know, nothing too challenging in terms of the style. This very much comes from the period in history where music was in charge and the words of the text were almost incidental. The beautiful sound, the beautiful flow is what was, uh, what was dictating the shape of the music. And so let's get started. Let's start off with the alto slash soprano part. And uh, as, you, as you probably heard, there are a couple of notes where you have to go down to an A soprano. So that just might require a little bit of tucking the chin in to get all the way down. Yeah. But on the other hand, it doesn't go too high for anyone as well. So. Sounds like bells, doesn't it? So this is the alto part from the start. Sing those first four bars. Ready? Here we go. And. Lovely. It really helps to smile as you sing these lines. Now, it you have a beat rest. You kind of bounce off the first beat of bar five, and it is. With me and. Lovely. And then you grab a breath at the start of bar seven and you sing. After one, it is one. Dominus tecum. 
Just listen to those pitches. I'll play it slowly. Ready? A three, four, one. A little bit of animation there. Da, ba, 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 ba. So make sure it's got lots of energy. From Dominus, bar seven. Three, four, one. Dominus tecum. Lovely. Make sure you don't land too heavily on that lower note. It would be quite easy to go tecum because you're thinking about the next phrase, place it beautifully on that B there. Okay, now the, the phrase continues with a Benedicta two and a nice octave leap coming up. So we're in after three here on Benedicta. One, two, three. Benedicta two. In monibus. Listen to that again. One, two, three. Okay, so just a couple of things. The slightly longer notes there are the bear of Benedicta and that longer note in Eribus, just allowing your note to, to grow a little bit more on those longer notes. Benedicta, last note of bar nine. Oh, one, two, three. Benedicta two. Good morning, Lovely, enjoy that melismatic line lovely shape there. Okay, now we're back to the B. We've sung it a couple of times in the piece so far, so it should be starting to feel like home. And we sing... Et benedictus. Listen to that again. And one. Sing with me. And one. Et benedictus. Carrying straight on. So there's a few white notes here, which of course are two beats, as well as one note which is tied across the bar line there at Ventris. So just be aware, quite a few two beat notes here. Straight on at Fructus in bar 15. Are we ready? Three, four, one. Fructus Ventris to Jesus. That doesn't continue down, that stays on the B. And then to finish the phrase, we're up to an E. So we sing to Jesus. And Jesus, that's the long note of Jesus, two two beat notes tied together. So it's four beats in total. Let's go back a little bit. Let's go from Et Benedictus, which is uh, bar 13, second note. And we'll sing to the end of the line. Are you ready? After one, three, four, one. Et Benedictus. Excellent. Now we take a huge breath and we sing after one. It is one song. Just listen to those pictures from Sancta Bar 21 and one. Sing that together after one, three, four, one. Sancta Maria, Mater That one is going to challenge the sopranos ever so slightly. All right, but, uh, but as I say, just tuck my chin in uh, to get those lower notes. And if it doesn't sound, just do your very best. As, as Lisa has already said, the altos will cover you. Okay, now, in bar 25, we go back to the D. We've sung a couple of those in the last couple of bars. So we sing... Nice little line there. Ready? Three, four... Very nice. Then we sing one. Peccatonibus. That's really nice, that little line. It's the, one of the only accidentals. In fact, maybe the only accidental in the entire work. 
Okay, so just make sure you're enjoying that. Peccatori was ready. Three, four, one. Peccatori bus. Grow through that E towards the D sharp. It's particularly uh, rewarding to sing it like that. And then on to the last night, last line. Mangetinora. Are we ready after three? One, two, three. Mangetinora. Then up to an E. Mangetinora. Now that, when I recorded it, I made the mistake of thinking it would go but actually it comes back to the C sharp, which is actually quite useful because we end up singing it three times in a row. There's that C sharp again. Sing it with me, please, altos. And one. And then to finish off. Mortis Nostre, please. One, two. Mortis Nostre. Amen. And that is it. Now, I think the trickiest thing with this piece is it's pretty unrelenting in terms of the demands on the line. Very few breaks, and the breaks that are there are literally just sort of a single beat to grab a breath. The phrases continue one after the other. So as we go through, I'll invite you, as I'm teaching the tenors and the basses, you know, sing along as we have our playthroughs, uh, just to get the, the shape of the piece into your head. Oops, back to the birthdays there. Okay, so your first note is there, and let's sing it through with the alto voice slash soprano voice a little bit louder. Here we go. Nice deep breath and... And one. And one. Sweet, love little piece. Okay, so everyone, back to the top. Quick sip of drink, and we'll have a look at the tenor line. Okay, so we can see at the start, uh, this actually opens in what's called canon, where each part comes in singing the same thing, albeit at different octaves, as opposed to a fugue where it's a fifth or fourth away. So the altos come in, and the tenor comes in at the same pitch. Excuse me, that, uh, that's a complete mistake. Doesn't go down to the D, goes down to the E instead. Try reading the notes, Benjamin. Are we ready? After two. One, two. Ave Maria, grazia plena. Okay, lovely. Now, we go down to the B after a breath, so it is... Dominus Tecum. Okay, so far, fairly familiar ground here. Are we ready, tenors? Bar six. One, two, three. Dominus Tecum. Short note there on cum. You grab a quick breath. 
and you sing some slightly odd shapes there so just listen to benedicta to the last note of bar eight so one two three Okay, are we ready? Benedicta two. A one, two, three. Benedicta two. In moribus. In moribus. I think it's really useful as you're singing this one to remember where the, a, the F sharps are. Because you have four of those in that one phrase. Again, it just allows you to sort of anchor yourself to where the notes are landing. Then, rather unusually, um, certainly compared to the top line, you have three beats rest tenors. In enjoy it. Your next note starts a tone higher than the note you finished on. And we sing three, four, one. Bet Benedictus. Okay, very much pushing the tenors to their upper register. So let's sing that together, please. Tenors and one. Et benedictus. Then carrying on. Fructus ventris tu Jesus. Some really nice shapes in that, but there's a lot going on. So let's listen to fructus. Let's do it slowly. Fructus, bar 16. Three, four, one. Fructus ventris tu Jesus. Great. Let's sing it at full speed now. Bar 16, after one. Three, four, one. Fructus ventris tu Lovely. Aim for the note on Jesus. You can tell it's important because it's a long note and it comes on the first beat of the bar. And, of course, uh, it has the word Jesus on it. Now, carrying on, we're straight up to the D there, just for bar 20. So it is... Sancta Maria. You've got two notes there going across bar lines, one after the other. So really lean. Sancta Maria. And really make those notes lovely and broad. Sing with me, please, tenors. The upbeat bar 20. A one, two, three. Sancta Maria. Lovely. And because you're leaning on that long note, make the notes that follow. Sancta. Make them lighter. Maria. Lovely. Now, we're up to an F sharp and we sing. Sancta sequence there, quite unusual for the time, Monteverdi being innovative even at the age of 15. So from the last note here, just above me, last note of bar 21, one, two, three, Sancta Maria. And again, less of the R each time, just so it gives it some nice shape. Then we have a three, four, one, Mater Something a bit more straightforward, all moving by step. Okay, really nice little line there. Give it lots of, give it lots of shape. From Marta Day, after one, three, four, one. Marta Day, ora pro nobis. Excellent. Now, our next note is a fifth away. So we sing one. Peccatoribus blanket in So let's listen to that again from Peccato and one. Be careful at the Toribus, it is a D natural, no D sharps for you, tenors, I'm afraid. Uh, from Peccatoribus, this is bar 25, uh, sorry, bar 28. And one. Peccatoribus nonket in honor. Carrying on. Nonket in honor mortis nostre. Amen. Obviously.
was he slowing down in the last two bars? Listen to it from Nunc et in order. Okay, so from Nunc et in order, bar 31, ready, three, four, one. Nunc et in order, mortis nostre. There you have the tenor line. So let us sing that through with the tenor voice louder this time. Back to the beginning. Oops. That was the birthdays again. Okay. So you'll hear the soprano slash alto part come in. And tenors, remember, we come in at exactly the same pitch just a bar and a half later. Here we go. Deep breath. Gorgeous line. Each of the lines is absolutely beautiful. Still very, very early in terms of what we come to think of as Baroque music, but definite hints of what Monteverdi was going to do later in his career. So uh, that leaves the bases supporting the at uh, the bottom of the texture. And let's go back to the beginning and learn the bass line, everyone. Let me just put this in the right place for later. Okay. So you can see we've got three bars rest bases, and you come in. do get a restatement of the opening, uh, albeit with a shorter na at the end of planar. <laughs> Excuse me. So, Ave Maria bases it goes. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Okay, short na on the end. Sing with me, please. And Ave Maria, gratia plena. Short now, as I say. Back to the A, okay, which is the first note of Grazia Plena. And we sing Dominus Tecum. Let's sing that, please, basses after three. One, two, three. Dominus Tecum. Great. Now, bar 10 has three beats. One, two, three. Three of rest, and then we sing Benedicta tu in munieribus. Nice little line for us, basses. Sing with me, please. Benedicta. One, two, three. Benedicta tu in munieribus. Lovely stuff. Now we have two beats rest before moving on to the next line. So, et benedictus it is. Et benedictus. Okay, we're starting and ending on that D with a little bit of animation in the middle. Let's sing that together, please, spaces. Ready? And... Et benedictus. 
nice. Now we've got uh, a couple of tied notes in the next phrase. So we come in after three there in bar 17. So it's two, three. Fructus ventris Jesus. So we've got two tied notes which are made of crotchets, fruk and tu. And Jesus, of course, is two two-beat notes. So that's a four-beat note. Plenty of time to sing a lovely long line. Excuse me. I need to uh, need to blow my nose later. Uh, <laughs> uh, too much information, Benjamin. Um, the Jesus, which is four beats, sing all the way through. Fructus. Okay, let's sing that together. Fructus, ready? A one, two, three. Fructus ventris tu. Excellent. I'm loving all of the people in the live chat, all of the Tenaltos who are singing the bass line at pitch. Good on you. Excellent, ladies. Enjoy yourselves. Now then, bar 23, Sancta Maria. We have a three-beat rest. One, two, three. Sancta Maria. Those tied notes, as we were singing when we were tenors, you know, really do sing through them, uh, sing as if you were in a beautiful chapel, like that wonderful St. Monica's Chapel that we'd had our come and sing in, which had that glorious acoustic. Santa Maria. There we are. And then we have a three, four, one. Mater Dei, on our so there is, just like the tenors had it, but we are singing in step. Okay, really nice line, all moving by next door neighbour. Sing for me please, basses, after one, three, four, one. Mater Dei, ora pro nobis. Fabulous, and on to the last line. So we sing, starting on the G here in 29, it's one. Peccatoribus nunc et in order. Listen to that. So enjoy those longer notes there. Okay, so peccatoribus and one. Peccatoribus nunc et in can see we have a single beat rest moving up a tone to the end Mortis nostre, amen. so falling from the B and then a long note on Amen and then resolving to the D there we are so what we'll do is we'll sing that all the way through with the bass voice louder and then we'll have a playthrough with everyone singing at the same level. Okay, so three bars bases, and then you are in. Here we go. Altos first. Antennas. Ready? And. Thank you. 
I really love how each of these lines has its own character and yet fits together so beautifully with the rest. So let's set the levels all to be at the same point. So it's not one voice louder. We have an ensemble, the Patrick Cathedral Consort. And so we will enjoy a full sing through of this lovely, lovely piece, starting with the altos there, followed by the tenors, and then of course the basses. So I hope you've enjoyed learning, everyone. Time to sing. Are we ready, altos? Ready? Three. Uh, I'll, I'll count you in. Ready? Two, three, four. And. have it everyone that is our piece for the choral alphabet for this week the midway point starting with allegri and here we are just wrapping up the monteverdi now as i said next week we're going to be looking at a piece was originally by a composer called neumann he wrote the original hymn tune and uh, a composer called j.s bach came along and produced a lovely harmonization which we shall learn next week on Wednesday. We are back though of course on Fun Friday with When You're Smiling, uh, a collection of really, really cheery songs including some lovely submissions from Home Choir themselves. People have sent me yet more wonderful little pieces which I'm very much looking forward to sharing with all of you. So some of those this coming Friday. And enjoy the rest of your day. If we're in Choir of the Earth I shall see some of you later on for, do you know what, I think it might even be some Monteverdi. Who'd have thought it? Um, but in the meantime enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, to those you not very well particularly dear jill feel better soon and we look forward to seeing you up and about and singing along very very soon take care everyone all the best bye, -bye.